You ready? Hi ho. Hi, all right. A little Disney theme there. Hi ho. Hi ho. It's off the film we go. We've got bad sound and then we've got someone. That's why I don't sing for a living, people. Hey, it's number one best selling author and motivational speaker, Eric Qualman. Most of you know me as Equal Man. I'm super excited to get seven super tips from Walt Disney CEO, Bob Iger. Now this particular episode is near and dear to my heart. As most of you know, my laughable goal out there is to have the next Disney World. That's right, a physical location where families can go for edutainment. They go for entertainment, but they leave with an education. Uh, I'd say a few things that I've learned and what served me well. First of all, nothing beats good hard, hard work. I know that sounds really trite, but I came to my adult life or my, my career with a, a modest intellect, um, but a tremendous work ethic, and that served me extremely well. With that came a, a real desire to, um, to do well, but I knew in order to do that I had to be well prepared. Too. So I'm a, I'm a student. I learn a lot. To this day, I try not to go into anything cold. Mm -hmm. I try to learn. It also, by the way, one of the most helpful things in terms of making decisions is accumulating knowledge, is making a decision not a, from sh by shooting from the hip, not by winging it, but by learning enough about something to either form a knowledgeable opinion or to make a decision based on sure. knowledge that's accumulated. And I think along the way, more than anything else, that has probably contributed to where I am today. Well, I think leaders fail for a number of reasons. Uh, arrogance is a sure way to create failure. Uh, sometimes in leadership positions, in positions of power, particularly when success ensues, it's easy for people to allow success to go to their heads and to get arrogant. Sometimes they fail because Leadership can be an isolating experience, and in isolation, you lose the ability, for whatever reason, uh, to hear differing opinions. Sometimes with leadership comes a power that intimidates people to even express themselves in honest ways. And I think the last thing with leaders, which probably is a collection of all the things I just said, is it can go to your head. The old power corrupts, I think, is an apt uh, truly apt statement or concept. Well, as you can imagine, when you, when you manage a company that is as complex as this in so many businesses, there's um, an interesting challenge to manage for today and manage for tomorrow. I talk about it in terms of using your hands. You, you have to have one hand in the future and one hand in the present. If you have two in one place, then you fail. If you have two in the future, then you're not managing your business day to day, and that's a big problem operationally. And if you're just managing today, then you're going to miss out on opportunities, or you're going to completely ignore significant threats and not prepare yourself for that. So this notion of protecting the present is something that I talk about a lot at the company. David Putnam, Sir David Putnam, gave a speech in the UK a couple of weeks ago, and he said, protectionism is much more digestible than innovation, which I thought was very well put. So as the CEO of the company, I feel that it is my role to make sure everybody's got a hand in the future and a hand in the present, and that we are mindful of the value the present is delivering, but not so overly protective of it that we're ignoring you know, a, a world that is changing right before our eyes. First of all, there's a Japanese word, which he didn't teach me, I discovered in a documentary about a sushi chef in Tokyo called Shokunin which is the relentless pursuit of perfection. Mm -hmm. uh, the, I, I've never worked with anyone or seen anyone up close that embodied that than Steve Jobs. He believed that perfection, mostly in the product that they created, had incredible value. And it, that was a core value to Apple, as a for instance. Um, he had talk about guts and the ability to take chances. Phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. And the... Um, perseverance often required, particularly in the face of tremendous pessimism. Yeah. Uh, he was quite something there. He, um, you know, he also had an incredible designer's eye. And I've worked with people before who have taste, but he could 
hone in on the most minute detail and understand that even the smallest detail, if well done, contributes a tremendous amount of value to the whole. The whole thing. You can make decisions on people pretty quickly in terms of whether there's someone you want to hire or not. Right. But in terms of whether they have absolute leadership capabilities, the only thing you really know immediately is whether they look the part, whatever yeah. that means. Right. And people have different definitions of, right. of what that means. But I think you need time to really see someone and get to know them better to determine whether they're a leader. See them in action, see them interacting with people, listening to whether they're open-minded, how passionate they are, you know, whether they uh, have the ability to take risks. To, uh, the, the, the quote you, you threw back at me earlier, I think there are a lot of things you have to see before you can actually stamp leader on a person's forehead. Disney, having been founded in 1923 by Walt Disney, still had a, 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 an abnormal adherence to its legacy, to its heritage, to its past. It was, they, they were, it was a religion. And what was clear to me is that if that adherence or the reverence that people had within the company for that heritage um, continued, it would get in the way of innovation we would not be able to ad adapt quick enough. We would not be able to look at change with an open mind and an ability to seize the opportunity as opposed to just looking at his threat. And so I started articulating in the succession process the need to balance heritage with innovation. And what I ultimately concluded was that we need to respect our past because there are a lot of qualities about the past, the brand attributes, what Disney stood for, a number of other things, attention to quality, and uh, that, were ha that had value and that should be basically carried forward into the future. But let's not revere it, because if we revere something, then we might as well just put it in a glass case and in a museum okay. and let, let people look at it and say, wow, look at, look at that. And there's a big difference. But there were a lot of folks in the company that were more on the reverential side than the respect side. And I had to break, I had to really attack that. In some cases, it meant changing our personnel. In some cases, it, may, it meant taking some you know, big, bold decisions that felt anti-brand to some people that, in my, in my opinion, weren't at all. It was more about being pro-present and future than it was about in any, anything that would be against the past or you know, the, the brand. I'm uh, fond of reminding people at our company that honest mistakes deserve second chances, that in effect it's okay to fail, it's okay to make a mistake. If it's the result of an honest error or trying hard, um, working hard to uh, fulfill a, um, a dream or to fulfill an instinct and learning over time that it doesn't work, it doesn't necessarily mean a career is over or a reputation is killed. When a reputation is killed is when failure comes as a result of loss of integrity, thorough lapse of judgment, breaking of rules, standards, laws, for instance. So there's, it's very black and white for me in that regard. One type of failure doesn't deserve a second chance. In terms of failing in, for legitimate reasons or uh, for business, uh, obviously there are degrees. Uh, abject failure on a sustained basis is obviously something that Unfortunately, the environment doesn't allow us to tolerate. Um, initial failure, whether it's mine or someone else's, f you know, for reasons that um, you know, could be varied but don't necessarily, are not necessarily rooted in um, what I'll call tremendous personal error, I think it's important to give, to give people an opportunity to learn from that and to give them a chance to try again in some other form. That's it for today's seven super tip show. Those were seven super tips from Disney's Bob Iger. My hope is to help unlock and unleash your inner superpower. To make sure you get the next episode, hit that subscribe button below. And remember, until next time, it's not what we take from the world, it is what we leave behind. I'll try not to look at you guys too. So we got, what kind of animal is that, a bird? Person. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whenever you're ready. <laughs>